Okay, here we have graphing a system of three linear inequalities. So um, I'm going to try my best. We just have to get the general idea here. So before I graph the top one, I need to put the slope intercept form. So I'm actually going to add 2x to both sides of the equation. And I will get 5y is less than or equal to positive 2x and positive 15. Then I will divide everything by 5. And I didn't divide by a negative, so the symbol will stay the same. But now I have it in the correct form. So I have a y-intercept of 3, and I'm going to go up 2 and over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I end up about there. Now let me get my ruler, and I can connect those. I have my giant ruler out. I couldn't find the little one. Okay. Then now what we're going to do is we're going to draw the second equation. Now this did have a bar underneath, so I am okay to leave that as a solid. In Alex, if it's supposed to be dotted, you have to make sure you make it dotted. Now this equation, x and negative 4. You have to remember that when you have x equals something, or x and an inequality symbol and a number, that is a vertical line. And it's a vertical line at negative 4, when x is negative 4. So my vertical line should be here. However, notice that there is no bar underneath this inequality, which means this line should be a dotted line. And that's pretty easy to do in Alex. For paper, I have to actually just erase little nuggets out of there, and then it makes it look like a dotted line, okay? Now the bottom one, when you have y and a number with no x's, y in a number is going to be a horizontal line at 7, positive 7, which means I'm going to have a horizontal line going this way. Okay, and this one does have a bar, so it should be solid. It's not going to be dotted. Now I have to do all the shading, okay? And I will shade everything and then I will color the answer in a different color, like red or orange something, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shade the y values that are less than this line. Remember, this is the diagonal line here. This is this line. This equation belongs to this line. So I'm going to shade the y values that are less than that line. Well, here's where it touches the y-axis. The y values less than that line are down here, which means this is the side of that line that I need to color. Okay. Now, the second equation says x should be greater than negative 4. So here's the line, and greater would be to the right. So that means I would shade this region, everything all the x values bigger than negative 4. Okay. So far, the two regions that overlap, you've got this one going this way, and you've got this one going this way. So right in here is where those two regions overlap. But we still need to graph the last one. So here it says when y is less than 7. Here is 7, the, that line, and the y values that are less than that are down here. So we need to shade this region. Now which region got shaded by all three? Notice that would be in this triangle. Nope, it would not be in this triangle because everything I shaded was below here, down here, right? So the first equation was everything down here. So none of this could possibly be the answer. None of this, because I have to meet all three criteria in order for it to be the only one left. Okay, so since that first equation says everything below that solid line, these shaded regions cannot possibly be the solution. Okay, then I have to shade everything greater than negative 4, which means everything going in this direction. So all of this stuff to the left of negative 4 couldn't possibly be a solution. So none of that. 
okay? Then I had to be less than seven, which means I had to be below here. Everything that I have left is, is good, it's correct. So the answer is actually going to be all of this dotted line, all of this solid line, and this solid line. Everything in here, in this particular section of the graph, is going to be the solution. So everything down here. This fits all of the criteria. I have to be below this line, so notice that I did not shade in this little pocket up here. Okay, I have to be below that line, to the right of this line, and below the solid diagonal line as well. So you really have to go in and shade. If you don't shade, it's really hard to tell. And if you have colored pencils in different colors, it's actually even easier to tell with that. Okay, so I'm actually going to do the second one with colored pens. So here I have y has to be less than or equal to 8. That means a horizontal line, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And it's a solid horizontal line. And I'm going to be shading everything less than that line. So I'm going to be shading everything below that line. Okay. Next equation, already set up to graph. A y-intercept of negative 3, and then I'm going to down 2 and over 1 to get that line. Now remember, everything below this line is shaded. Now for this diagonal line, it doesn't have an equal bar. So I should have a dotted line, not a solid line when it comes to this diagonal. The best way I can achieve that is just to erase little chunks of it, right? So I've got this dotted line here. In Alex, you can just click the dotted line object option and it'll give it to you. Now here, my Y values are going to get shaded that are bigger than this line. Here's the line, the Y values bigger than it are up here. Now technically it goes all the way up, but since I can't, I'm not supposed to go above that line, I'm supposed to be below that line. I'm not going to shade it. Or I can choose to shade it and just dismiss that top part because it's not good. It's not applicable to the second equation. So I can draw all of my shaded region right there. Right? This part in here where the green and the blue overlap is my solution so far. So my final answer will not be up here, will not be in this pocket, and will not be down here at all because it has to match. Both of them have to overlap. But I've got one more, and that one's got to overlap as well. So one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to go up one, two, three, four, and over one. So now I have another line going in this direction. And if I take that line, this one should be a solid. And I want the y values that are greater than that line. These are the y values greater than the line. So I'm going to be shading in this direction. Everything over there. Now I have to figure out where does the blue and where does the black, or I'm sorry, blue, green, and red overlap. The blue, I can see the blue in here. Right, so I can see the blue in here. I can see the green in here. And then I can definitely see the red in here. So this little triangle right here that I'm coloring orange is the solution. This part in here is where all three overlap. Okay. There's no other section that contains all three colors. This section contains green and red. This one contains red only, blue and red, blue only, green and blue, and green only. But this part in here is the only section that contains both all three, blue, green, and red. 
So that is my solution. And if it asks you for a point in that solution, you would just pick some coordinates, like maybe negative one or two and six or seven, and they should be in this quadrant here. Same thing here, if they ask you to pick a point in that solution, you could pick the origin, zero, zero, and it would be in this particular section, okay? But that is how you solve the systems with three inequalities. Graph all three, shade all the particular regions, and make sure where all three overlap is your answer. It's hard to do on the computer. You cannot do this problem on the computer. You need to do it on your paper, and then just put in the lines and the one final answer shaded region in the computer. You cannot shade in three different colors on the computer to find out when they overlap in. That has to be done on paper, and then you just type in the final answer on the computer.